my parents were uh, are uh, were uh, they're retired, um, sort of uh, physician scientists. And so I, I, I grew up, you know, very aware of research. So I was lucky um, in, in that sense and even did some research uh, uh, when I was in high school. So I was a, uh, um, uh, uh, lived, I grew up in Chicago. And so I did research at the University of Chicago. Uh, and then um, from there, I, uh, I went to Harvard uh, and I uh, majored in biochemistry. Uh, I'm sorry, in chemistry. Uh, and um, I uh, did a lot of chemistry and biochemistry research uh, and then decided to go to graduate school where I went to uh, MIT where I was a um, graduate student uh, in, in the Department of Biology. They have one big department and I worked on biochemistry on protein folding and then um, uh, really trying to understand kind of the chemical basis of how molecules take their shape and how they um, uh, carry out all these different functions that we know molecules can do. Uh, and then um, went to, after my PhD, to do a postdoc at Yale. Um, and at Yale, uh, I worked on, on uh, solving structures of proteins um, with crystallography, but also began working on, um, uh, it was at the time, people were starting to discover that many protein molecules were made up of smaller modules. Um, domains, and so I began to study how those what how those work and what they look like. Uh, but that led um, when I started my own lab about 25 years ago here at San Francisco. Um, you know, we were very interested in uh, kind of how these sort of components that make up proteins are are used as kind of a toolkit for evolution to build uh, new sorts of functions and and, and create new. Uh, cellular behaviors and really that led us over the years to towards this area of synthetic biology of trying to actually not just study and take apart um, existing living systems but asking um, how is it that evolution can use uh, sort of pre-existing smaller molecular pieces and combine them uh, and uh, just the way that you know uh, say like uh, in electronics you combine transistors or uh, um, you know other components but and then make uh, you know different kinds of in this case, molecular machines that can do uh, so many different things. And so that led to uh, us going down the path of, of, of trying to build, to ask how we could use these components to build new kinds of behaviors of cells. Um, and, um, you know, I'd say most, more, most recently, um, you know, that was mostly out of interest, but most recently in the last really five to 10 years, we have uh, realized that, you know, part of what we're trying to do is to understand how life genetically programs complex behaviors we realize if we really can understand that and learn how to engineer that then we have the capability of making cells that care, could carry out new and very useful functions and so one of the the most exciting things uh, recently is that we've been applying our our approach to synthetic biology to engineering immune cells that can um uh, we can we can program them to better recognize and kill cancer so these are Instead of giving someone a drug, you can give them an engineered cell that executes a very sophisticated program to home in on the cancer cells and really discriminate between cancer and normal cells uh, and, and effectively try to clear the tumors. So uh, I've been involved in that, and it's a really emerging new field. There are some FDA-approved cell therapies in 2017, the first two ones, uh, relatively simple. It is a big future. Uh, as part of this, I started a company um, called Cell Design Labs that was acquired by um, Gilead, one of the, 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 the big pharmas uh, here in the peninsula. Um, and so I've seen that side of things. Um, and uh, um, really, I think it's a, it's a very exciting time to learn about biology and study and, and see what sort of is the amazing things about living systems, but also really to start thinking about living systems as a medium for for solving a lot of different problems, whether it's in health or in agriculture or other other areas, um, I'm actually involved now in a company that's trying to grow meats uh, and so synthetic meats. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that's possible um, using biology. God, I know. Um, you know, I think like anything else, it's like uh, how do you kind of break down what you need to do and prioritize and uh, um, uh, 
Yeah, because you need to, you need to, to, I guess I like to try to really, um, I mean, you have to have kind of long range plans and you have to have day to day plans and, uh, you know, try to break them, you know, you take, take your big plans and break them down into pieces and focus uh, on each thing and do the best you can uh, on each thing. So those, that's, those are the sort of ways that I try to do things. Uh, you know, I don't really have, I have a lot of favorites. Um, I think, you know, for me overall is like just, you know, try lots of specific things. At some point you sort of develop more of a sense of, of, of you know, just like I feel like I really do understand the logic of how biological systems are designed uh, at some sort of intuitive level. Uh, and so I think really kind of reaching that level of understanding is one of the, the most uh, satisfying things. Um, okay. Uh, you know, I think what what we can do is um, there are many things. I think here's the deal: like um, you also have to think about the cost and, and what makes more sense. So um, what I would say is that um, we have pretty good ways of making vaccines and, and launching a, a new immune responses for. For pathogens and really, in, in a sense, these mRNA vaccines that Moderna and other and Pfizer have are really kind of a part of a of synthetic biology and, and being able to create new things. Um, and so that actually, you know, ends up being a lot cheaper than say take, taking a cell and manufacturing and changing it to to do to recognize that. Um, so really, I mean, it's more for really, really difficult diseases like cancer where we can't really do vaccinations that we do this kind of fancy engineering. Now, that being said, um, and because you have to remember these therapies right now are cost like $300,000. Um, that, uh, that being said, um, uh, you know, the, the man, how we manufacture cells, whether we could make them from IPS, uh, that's induced pluripotent stem cells that could give us a, a, a limitless supply would really uh, you know, de significantly decrease the price of those things. So, um, <coughs> There, there are many things we could do, but but we have to sort of, you know, always think about cost and and, and effort and what the alternatives are. Um, and I think cells, um, really, you know, there are certain classes of diseases like cancer or autoimmunity or in, neuroinflammation that are, you really, you know, it's very hard to have a drug that could really address those problems in a very precise way. Um, but um, you know, because you can think of a cell as a little microscopic computer that can go in and kind of you know, it's it's a self-driving car, but it's a cell, um, and 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 you know, it's really those very challenging diseases like cancer that that we need these sorts of things. Uh, I think regeneration is one of those examples. We really can't repair things that that normally won't grow back, but I think that it is possible. We are very interested in the idea of could you make cells that would recognize an injury and then could start producing some of the signals that are normally there when when tissues first grow. Uh, but are missing in the adult and the injured tissue. And then could you uh, jumpstart, you know, again, what we're usually trying to do is to jumpstart things that this, the body will normally do, but do it, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, have a, have a, um, uh, uh, engineered cell be able to, to initiate and, and, and nucleate those, those, those behaviors. Okay. So the sequence of the, the, the amino acid sequence of a protein, deter, you know, and we know determines its fold and, and um, uh, what, uh, you know, their, their basic sort of interactions, like the hydrophobic groups tend to go on the inside, and then you also have to make hydrogen bonds and other things like that. Um, we now actually are, are, have reasonably good algorithms that can help predict what a folded pro what structure a protein will fold into, or that where we can design proteins that have specific structures. So um, um, that you know that area that field is is advanced quite a bit. Um, okay, let's just talk about genetic engineering. There's a lot of genetic engineering going on, and um, what we tend to do is we tend to take immune cells, and and one of the ways to get them in is to have a virus that encodes new DNA and we infect those cells and then um, that will insert that DNA into the genome of that, that T cell. So that's typically what we do. We have, we use lentivirus that are, are as a type of virus that will infect 
um, T cells, these immune cells quite well. So um, there are other, you know, when you hear about say CRISPR based genomic editing, those are, those are where you, you could use a virus or some other particle to get CRISPR into a cell. And then now that's going to go recognize something in the genome and, and either cut it out or put something in its place. Um, and so that's, you know, a lot of what people are trying to do with that is to, first of all, take diseases that um, uh, involve, you know, one gene that ha is, is, is wrong or, or deleted or mutated and then repair it or replace it. Um, and so that um, that is uh, another kind of, you know, uh, uh, gen genetic engineering that's going on. Uh, as I said, in our case, we are really removing one type of cell and adding a, a program with a virus and then putting the cell back in. We are, as I said, we, we uh, you know, the first uh, T cell therapies for, can for blood cancers um, are out since 2017, and they're, they're really working very well. Um, there's still issues with trying to lower the price. Where we're uh, all trying to work now is what's much more common is um, solid cancers, like lung cancer or pancreatic cancer or other things like that. And there, um, it hasn't quite been as successful because it's, it's really a very challenging problem. Um, and so uh, there are many problems about solid cancers. Oftentimes, there's not as clear a different antigen or to recognize that distinguishes them. They, they are a lot like our normal cells. Um, and then uh, also, uh, solid tumors tend to be uh, what we call immunosuppressed. They actually block immune activity. So uh, you have to design cells that can really much more specifically recognize the tumors uh, and that can overcome this environment. So those are a lot of the things that we're working on right now. And we're hoping that um, uh, this will be uh, uh, um, more effective. Um, so the, uh, and, and um, how do we determine the safety uh, of these design cells and their effectiveness? First of all, we test them. We first engineer them and test them in vitro against target cells or you know, cells that they should recognize, cells that they shouldn't recognize. But then we, the next step is to test them in mouse models of tumors where we'll put tumors into mice and then inject these cells. We put them into the tail vein and then they go around and we see if they're able to, oftentimes we'll put two tumors in, one that's like a normal tissue model and one that's a tumor model. And we'll see, can they actually just, you know, kill one, one of the tumors and not the other. Uh, and then eventually if that looks good, then you start doing clinical trials where you have to get an FDA approval and then you, you have to then, uh, um, uh, you, you know, recruit patients to, to try. Um, okay, so yeah, you can look up CAR T cells. So possibly use viruses, vectors for drugs against cancer cells. So uh, yes, I mean, this, you know, there's sort of an infinite number of possibilities of what you can do. There are what we call oncolytic viruses that try to target a cancer and then infect it and actually kill only the cancer cells. Uh, and they often have programs built into them where they'll recognize certain proteins that are active um, only in cancer cells. So maybe the virus will infect more than just the cancer cells, but the virus can, can its killing mechanism might only know, work with if there's a, a protein um, that is associated with cancer. Um, so those are, you know, I mean, there's a, you know, there are many different possibilities now, almost anything you can think of. Um, and uh, so, so, you know, um, one of the um, problems with that is how do you how do you actually, how do you still actually target it? And that's one of the things that's really great about uh, T cells is we they they I don't know if you've seen them, but they they can move around. Um, you know they're uh, patrolling your body, so they will find you know the 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 tumor site. You don't have to inject them right in the right place, and that's a really important thing for finding you know metastatic tumors or tumors where you don't know where it is. Oftentimes we're trying to do is to treat diseases that aren't simple and aren't localized that could be removed by surgery. In today's world, uh, and where we use small molecules or drugs for cancer, a lot of them are what we call targeted therapies that recognize um, some mutation uh, that is, health, is part of the cause of cancer. But oftentimes what we find is that that will work for maybe six months, but then the, the, uh, the, the cancer will mutate and then selection will drive uh, growth of these resistant forms, and then you have to change the drug and so forth. So that really does happen. Um, what, you know, part of what we're trying to do with the cells 
is because the cells might recognize something about tumor, the cancer, we can still program them to actually um, be, in some ways, you know, be very specific in, in deciding that they should kill something. But then in terms of what they kill, maybe we could tune how specific they are so they kill sort of a, a broader set of cells in that area. Um, so we actually uh, believe that, that cells may allow us to uh, sort of both be, you know, very controlled about when we activate killing, but also have some sort of a, a cast a wider net of what they kill so that they could minimize this kind of problem. Um, and so we have a paper that's coming out in Science Translational Medicine uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks that's about this, this problem. Um, but it's a big problem for any kind of cancer. I mean, I think, that, you know, I'd, I'd say in biology, it's sort of constrained to this idea that you have genes and molecules and then cells and then cells become tissues. Uh, so there, you know, you sort of, that you are working in general within that. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's interesting stuff. People are doing things like trying to make, as I said, meat or um, material like synthetic leather or other things like that. Um, so there's, you know, uh, just a lot of things that, 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 are, that are possible.